Hello, I'm going to tell you a little bit today about the rhetorical framework infographic and why I made some of the choices I did when creating it. I, I decided to make this rhetorical framework infographic because the developing an argument unit is one of the first units we go through for junior English and it really uh, lays the foundation for the <clears throat> entire year. <clears throat> Um, students need to understand the rhetorical framework both in creating their own arguments and to analyze the arguments of others. If you see the rhetorical framework, the first thing I did was, was plan on some colors. I picked the warm oranges with the cooler greens because I thought that that was something that would stand out in a classroom. Um, and I, I liked the way that it kind of worked together and um, there were specific icons that were all the same color and then I kind of changed it as we went through. So if we look first at the top of the rhetorical framework, we have the title at the very top in a bold orange to help the students see it. And then the first three green boxes are all part of the rhetorical situation. Students need to understand exigence, which is a issue, problem, or situation that causes or prompts someone to write something. Um, and I used a icon of a triangle with a little exclamation point in it to help them remember that they need to know why is there an argument in the first place. The second part of the rhetorical situation is the audience. And I used the icon of three people to determine the audience. Um, and this is important for our students to understand because they need to understand that the audience really consists only of those persons who are capable of being influenced by this discourse and of being mediators or they have the capability to create change. Uh, and the final part of the rhetorical situation is the purpose. And they really need to understand the purpose or the reason for writing. Is it to entertain, to persuade, to inform, to shock? Is it a call to action? And I used um, and it, a little icon that looks like um, a bar graph there um, to help them understand that what we're looking for here is what are the desired results? What do they hope will happen as a result of this argument? Okay. And those three things are very important for anyone to understand when it comes to uh, the rhetorical framework and part of the rhetorical situation, whether they are writing their own argument or analyzing somebody else's. The second part is I use the central argument uh, and I made that a larger box because it's really kind of the core of the entire thing. And there is a triangle around it. And with the triangle, um, we use the, these are the rhetorical appeals. And uh, writers can appeal to their audience using either ethos, pathos, and logos. Now these three things are, are often very difficult for students to remember. They often particularly confuse ethos and pathos. So using the icons here was incredibly important. Uh, for ethos, I used a little figure of a person to help them remember that this is the um, this is appealing to an author's credibility. Um, for pathos, I used a little heart to remind them that this is an appeal to emotions. And in logos, I used a little um, light, uh, light bulb because I wanted them to remember that this was logic or logical thinking. And that is really the central argument. These are the three three appeals that work into the central argument as they're writing. And then the final thing that students really need to use, whether they are writing or analyzing, are those surface features, of like how is it all put together? And those are organization, structure, and form. So that's on the first bar, okay? And then underneath that is diction, syntax, imagery, and figurative language. So these things really kind of all work together as part of the surface features or the parts of writing that you will see um, as you are analyzing a piece of writing or if you are writing your own. You want to use all of these things in uh, cooperation to really create a, an effective argument and to determine if something you're reading is an effective argument and be able to look at the um, positives and negatives of it, what they do well, what you wish they had done differently or better. Um, and I really kind of made this in three particular points um, because I think that's really how students need to look at it. In the past, we've always done this as kind of an all-in-one and I think the three different main points of it will help them remember a little bit better how they all work together.
So this is my infographic on the rhetorical framework, and I hope to be using it with junior English this next year. Thank you.